Hello YouTube fam! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. First off, I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the love on my previous video. I worked on my book nook. It was a little bit of a do-over in the basement and I'm so happy with how it came out and I'm glad you guys love it as well. And if you missed that one, make sure to go back and watch it. But for today's video, we are actually working on some wedding DIYs. My sister recently got engaged and her wedding is coming up, so of course, being the DIYer that I am, I want to help her with some DIY projects. If you've been following this channel for a long time, you'll know that I had a whole DIY wedding series on here. So if you're getting married and are planning to make a bunch of DIYs for your wedding, definitely check those out. In this video, I'm going to show you some new DIY project ideas. I think they're going to turn out really amazing. And we're also going to get my sister's reaction, so I'm really excited for that. And a huge shout out to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. I'm going to be using my Cricut Maker 3 to personalize these items. So they're going to be extra special and before we get into it don't forget to like and subscribe down below if you haven't already and now let's get into the projects all right so first up this is something that my sister sent to me and we are going to build a champagne wall this is just so cute it definitely makes a statement this is a super versatile piece that you can use for desserts or drinks you can customize it by painting it any color or putting on any phrase that you would like and to start I already have my plywood already cut this is sanded plywood so it's nice and smooth and I got it cut down to six feet by three feet which is actually the same dimensions as the Etsy listing that I'm looking at and if you were to buy this it would be almost a thousand dollars so we're gonna make the same thing but for a lot less so the first thing I'm gonna do is to cut the top so that it's a nice arch and to do that I'm gonna make a little DIY compass so that we can create the perfect arch shape all right, so to start, we're finding the middle at 18 inches, and I'm gonna use that as the midpoint to create the compass, and you can totally do the string compass method. I've done that plenty of times in the past, but I wanted to get a more precise semicircle, so I'm just using some scrap wood, and all you need to do is to measure the distance from the midpoint to the top, which is 18 inches all the way around, and that's where you wanna drill a hole for your pencil to sit in, and then for the middle, we're just going to screw right into the plywood. And now we have the perfect compass that's going to create a beautiful arch shape. If you want to make the perfect arch or circle, this is definitely the way to do it. Like, look at how smooth this is. I'm very impressed with myself. <laughs> When it comes to cutting out curves, you want to go nice and slow for this, just making sure that you keep your eyes on that line the whole entire time. I also want to note that I'm using a scroll blade here. This is going to get you the smoothest cut because there's more teeth on the blade. I'm so glad that I can make this for my sister, although I'm not gonna lie, I wish that I had the DIY skills that I have now when I was getting married. Granted, I did not have the space to even make a DIY this big or even have an area to cut wood, so I just feel lucky that I have a home now to create these beautiful projects in. It definitely has opened up a world of possibilities and I hope that these projects inspire you to create something beautiful for your wedding if you're getting married. This might be the best arch that I've ever cut out, if I do say so myself. It looks really good, but to make it even more perfect, I'm going to sand out all the edges, especially at the two edges here and then also at the top. That is kind of the most important part, but once that's all sanded down, it's going to look perfect. So when I'm sanding this, I'm mostly focusing on the sides to make everything nice and smooth, but also the edges because those get quite sharp and since a lot of people will be around this, I want to make sure that there are no blunt corners. Creating the DIYs for this video really brings me back to where my channel first started. I got to help so many brides plan their weddings a couple of years ago when I was making these videos, so I want to say thank you guys for the support, especially if you were a DIY bride and have been following since then. Thank you so much. And if you're currently a DIY bride now, let me know in the comments what you're making for your wedding. I would love to know and hear all about it. To keep these upright, I'm creating some right triangles with a 12 by 12 inch square, and I'm just going to draw a diagonal line through the two corners and cutting that with my miter saw. I'm also going to use hinges for this part so that it's easy to set up and transport, and since the plywood is quite thin, we want to create some spacers so that our screws could sit in there perfectly, and you just want to drill in a pilot hole and make sure that everything lines up. I am measuring in 6 inches from both sides for the legs to sit and we're just going to screw the hinges in place and voila, this works like a charm. Okay, let's see if this will stand. 
Oh my god, yay! It worked! It looks so good, babe. I love it! I wish I did this for our wedding though. <laughs> So as you can see, this is standing all on its own and here are the legs in the back. This is nice because then you can close them and transport it pretty easily. If it's on uneven ground, I feel like this is gonna kick out of place. So I think I'm gonna put a horizontal piece right here and I just have to notch out the little triangles and fit it in there that way it is nice and secure. Now it's time to create some shelves for the champagne wall. So I'm using my miter saw and I'm cutting the shelves to be about 28 inches long so that there's going to be four inches on both sides. I'm using pre-primed pine here, which is going to make painting a little bit easier later. And you can use any type of wood to make it wider to suit your needs for this project. We're giving both the arch and the shelves two coats of paint and I'm using regular old latex wall paint for this. And we're gonna follow up with a clear coat just to seal everything in. This orange is such a fun color, especially for a fall wedding. I think it just looks so beautiful. And what's great about this project is that you can keep painting it over and over again just to fit whatever theme that you're doing for your party. And for the shelves, I'm using an off-white creamy color. This has some warmth to it, so I thought it tied nicely with the orange. And it also makes it feel a little bit more elevated than just using regular old white paint. I'm using painter's tape to map everything out and I'm marking off where the shelf should start and end and then I'm also going to draw a leveled line so I can see exactly where the shelves will be once they're all screwed in. These are about 10 and a half inches apart from each other and I have four shelves so these are spaced out evenly and I really just didn't want them to go super low. You can definitely add another shelf but I think four is plenty and then I went ahead and marked off where the holes are going to be. I'm basically adding them every three inches apart starting from the middle. Using a drill bit that is the same size as my screws, I'm going to drill in pilot holes in every single one of these. I'm about to put the shelves up. As you guys can see, I put one screw in the middle here and that's gonna help me put it up. These are two and a half, which is perfect because it's gonna give us plenty of support for our shelves. You can use clamps or get someone to help you to put these up, but since I'm doing it myself, I decided that I'm just gonna put a hole in the middle here. And then basically this middle screw is going to hold this up while I level it out and then screw the rest from the back. Okay, so now the shelf is basically in place with that one middle screw and from the back I'm using my drill to mark off where all of the pilot holes are going to be. This is going to give me the exact placement so that everything is going to line up perfectly. There are many ways to put shelves up but I wanted to do something minimal so that it looks like these are floating and this method just worked great. So once I got all the holes on there, I went and just drilled it all the way through so that our screws would fit. And then you can go ahead and remove the painter's tape and just screw everything in from the back. I numbered all the shelves so I knew exactly where each one of these went so that it would match perfectly. So everything was nice and straight and sturdy. And you can also create removable shelves if you wanted to use dowels. This would make it easier to transport, but it's really all up to you on how you want yours to function. To finish up this project, we are in the DIY room and I honestly can't remember the last time I was in here. Leave a comment down below if you guys can remember. The finishing touch to the champagne wall is to personalize it, so I'm going to use my Cricut Explore to do this. I've been a Cricut user for almost four years now and I feel like I've made some really amazing projects, especially when it comes to special occasions or events. Using my Cricut has been one of the easiest way to personalize and make custom projects. I have a ton of other videos on Cricut tutorials if you are a newbie. So be sure to check those out. For this project, I wanted to use removable vinyl. That way we could take it off and personalize it again and again with each different occasion. So if you wanna use the champagne wall yourself or maybe resell it, this is an easy way to get something off and personalize it for the next event or the next person. And I'm also using their smart vinyl and I love using this because it's just so easy. You don't have to put a mat or anything. All you have to do is to pop this in and it comes in a ton of different colors, but I wanted to use white so that it really pops against the orange. So here's my design. I just have cheers in a big script and then I did a cute little alliteration quote and it says toast to the tangs which is my future brother-in-law's last name so I thought that looked really cute together and all I have to do now is just to click make it and then load in my vinyl. 
So if you're not already familiar with Cricut, it is a smart cutting machine that allows you to create personalized projects with hundreds of materials. You also get a design software called Design Space and this comes free with your machine. And this allows you to create your own projects or browse from hundreds of other projects to personalize and make it yourself. And I will link my projects below as well as the machine that I'm using in case you're interested in checking out Cricut. They always have sales going on and tons of amazing bundles. So I would definitely recommend for you to check it out. After weeding the vinyl, I burnished it onto the transfer tape and this is going to allow me to stick it to exactly where I need it to go. So on the arch here, I'm adding painter's tape, making sure that it's straight and this way I can use it as a guide to transfer the design right onto the arch. I can't believe how easy this was to do. It took under 30 minutes to make and completely customize our beautiful champagne wall. You guys, can you even? This is just so cute. I'm actually jealous of my sister right now. <laughs> I love all the colors together and this is gonna look so good once we get all of the decor on here and get little glasses of champagne. Oh, it's so good. All right, so next up, I wanted to create some signs that would match the champagne wall. So I went online and I found these acrylic signs. Look at how cute they are. They match it perfectly and you basically just peel off the protective layer and it's a clear acrylic. Once you take it off, it'll look like this. I think it's a little bit hard to tell because it is clear, but I think it looks so beautiful and modern. I wish they sold stuff like this when I was getting married because I feel like the options were a little bit more limited a couple of years ago, but now you can find these in all different shapes and sizes. You can also buy little stands that come with it, which are great because then you can customize them by painting or staining them. I love the natural tones of this wood, so I'm going to keep it as is, but we are going to personalize the sign. So first off, I'm removing the protective layer on the back and that way we can work on it on one side while still protecting the other side. So I'm going to take that off. So now we have a shiny side and then a more dull side with the protective layer still. I'm going to use my trusty foam roller to cover the entire acrylic piece. I found that this gave me pretty even coverage and you will have to do a couple of coats, especially since this is acrylic. But if you're looking for more of a hand brush look, you can opt to use a paintbrush for this step as well. I've seen so many different variations online, so feel free to make this your own. So while that's drying, I hopped onto the Cricut Design Space to create my design. I used a beautiful script font to write the table numbers, and then I went into the image library to find a cherry blossom image. This is part of my sister's theme, and I thought it would be really beautiful to tie it into the table numbers. There were so many to choose from, but this one was just perfect, and I just mocked it all up on the canvas. And one thing that I find really helpful is to actually put the shape of the material onto the canvas. You could put that to scale, and then that way you're able to size everything perfectly without having to do extra guesswork. I use white vinyl for the table numbers and then I used a beautiful shiny gold vinyl for the cherry blossoms. I thought it'd be just a nice extra touch and let me tell you the weeding on this very intricate design was really worth it because I think it just looks so beautiful. <music> I ended up doing three coats of the paint onto the signs and after that dried, you can go ahead and just remove that protective layer on the other side. And look at how pretty and shiny this is. This is going to be where I put the vinyl on top of. So I'm starting with the table number in the center and then I'm going to do the corner pieces with the flowers and making those come off of the sides. Once I put everything together, it just looks so gorgeous and honestly looks like a store-bought piece, but I was able to customize it however I wanted. And to finish it up, we're going to clean up the edges. So I flip the sign over and then cut off the excess. And that's it to this project. The signs are done and ready to go. All right, so we're moving on to the last project and this is actually inspired by a TikTok that my sister saw. She texted me a link to the video and she basically said, this is what I want for my wedding. So she went to the thrift store and bought a whole bunch of lamps. Both of us love to go thrifting and I think it comes from our parents just buying secondhand items. So she bought a ton of them and I have them at my house now. So I'm going to work on them and I wanna show you how you can transform this into a cool centerpiece. The first thing you wanna do is to cut off the wires. So my sister took 
took them all off. You basically just want to take off this top part so that we can work with the rest and turn it into a beautiful centerpiece. Like with most things, the only way to figure out how to undo it is to turn it counterclockwise. So that's kind of what I did for all of these, but I found that it was pretty easy to loosen some screws and pull everything apart. For some of them, I was able to remove the wire inside, but don't worry too much if you don't disassemble the whole thing. Mostly, you just want to remove the harp that is used for the shade, and once you get that off, you can really just hide the rest of it with some floral foam. My sister found all of these lamps for about $5 or less, and I'm sure there were also some extra discounts for the half price stickers. So next time you're at the thrift store, make sure to keep your eyes peeled. These were such a great find, and since they're lamps, they're also really heavy, which is great because then you know that your centerpieces are going to be well weighed down. And before we can even spray paint these, please make sure to give them a good clean. These were caked with dirt and dust and it was just so necessary to clean them so that the spray paint can adhere better. Luckily, since we're using a spray paint that is essentially the same color as the base, it really only took one coat of the spray paint for really good coverage. I'm using a gold color to tie it into the theme, and I'm a little bit picky when it comes to gold spray paint. Sometimes it can just lead a little bit too orange, so this one is perfect, and I will link it down below for you. These came out so good, and I only did one coat, and I think that, that is sufficient because there's already gold underneath, so one coat is just fine, and now I have all of my florals here, and I'm ready to make my center piece arrangements. I have some floral foam here and we're basically just going to glue it right on top of the stand and then put in our flowers. Arranging flowers is one of my favorite things to do so I'm really excited for this project. So these ones are already spheres but you can just get the blocks and cut them yourself. I just thought this would be easier. So I'm just using hot glue and we're just going to put it right on top. All right, so now that they look like lamps again, it is time to put our flowers in. I just chose a lot of neutral colors that I thought would go well with the color palette we already have going on. First, what I like to do is to put filler flowers first, so something like this is perfect. You can kind of grab just little bunches at a time. I know that these are really long. For the most part, I'm just gonna stick it inside, but you could also glue it in, especially if the stems aren't long enough. Okay. The first one's in. <laughs> Building a floral arrangement is always a process of trial and error, but as a rule of thumb, the best formula is to start with your greenery and your filler flowers first. This kind of acts as a base, and then you could build on it with your focal and accent flowers, and I've actually never made an arrangement like this before. Since it's sitting pretty high up, you're going to see it from all different directions, so you want to make sure that you're creating radial symmetry by balancing it all out from all angles. So I found that the foam balls that I had were a little bit too small, so for the second one, I ended up just cutting down a block. This gave me a much bigger base to work with, which will also make your arrangement look more full. It just looks so much more balanced, so if you plan to create these, I would definitely suggest using larger floral foam for a larger centerpiece. In the end, I think these just look so luxe, it was so easy, and also very affordable to do. You can totally take the same project idea and create a candle stand by just gluing a wood round to the top of the lamp. So this project can be made multiple ways for your big day. Okay, so my sister is on the way. She has no idea that I set up the whole backyard, so I hope that I get a good reaction. Let's see what she thinks. Okay, so of course, as we're setting this up, we didn't weigh it down yet, and it fell because the wind blew. Oh, this little shelf is broken, but I'm gonna fix that. But for the reveal, we must carry on. I know my sister is still going to love it, but I just wanted to show you guys these reveals don't always go perfect. It's not a wedding day without some of the dramatics. <laughs> okay, so as you know, um, it accidentally fell, so I have to fix it, but it still looks good. So hopefully they have a good reaction still. Okay, Okay, we'll bring them in the bath. Also, this is Lois, my sister, and Hi. Danny, Whoa. my future father-in-law. <laughs> Okay, here it is. Okay, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's so cute. so pretty. It looks so nice. Do you like toast to the paint? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> These centerpieces are so cute. 
They turned out so good. Yeah, they look really Especially good. The okay, and then take a look at the table. This oh looks so gosh. nice. It's, it's low key crazy. So good. I can't believe you found wow. all these lamps for so cheap. Aren't they so cute? This little table number see. two. Oh my god, I didn't <gasps> Just, is this what we should do? That's just great. It's yeah. so nice. <laughs> you can swear, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we should use these. So cute. I love great it. job. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Happy wedding. I'm so glad that my sister loved the projects. We're already talking about what else we can create. I hope you guys liked the projects too and it gave you some inspo. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. If you want to follow along with more of the wedding festivities, make sure to follow me over on Instagram. I post on there every single day. And a huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring this video. I seriously could not have made these projects without them. If you'd like to check out my projects or any of the Cricut products that I used, make sure to click on the description box below. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and that is it for me today guys thank you so much for watching stay inspired and i'll see you in the next one bye